So initially I was intending for this video to be one of those ASMR watch me work in the shop and don't talk sort of videos. However, uh, I ran into a couple problems while tramming this machine, of which I will complain about later. So to curiosity, what type of video do you like? To, do you like the ASMR watch me work type of video or do you prefer some sort of narration? Maybe I should tell a few stupid jokes. So far what you've been watching me do is make a little swing arm that I can attach onto the bit that sticks out of the bottom of the router. And that just extends the arc on which you're measuring the, the variation in the table. So the bigger the arc you have, obviously the more sensitive you are because you're, you're amplifying the variation. And as you can see, this side's higher than the other side. So I reset it, swing it around, and it shows about 15 thousandths of tilt over that span. So here I'm drawing a little diagram to kind of show you how that can be fixed. Look at that, it's practically a freaking Picasso. Maybe I should put it up on my Etsy store as art. What do you think? So I was out here tramming my CNC last night. For those of you who don't know, the tramming, you see all these little ridges here, basically means the CNC the head on it is tilted forward or backwards just a little bit. So it's not cutting perfectly parallel. Anyway, tramming it is working on shimming it out on the bottom or the top to kind of get it to, to be cutting flat. Anyway, apparently I'm a little stronger than I thought I was and I torqued these up too much. And when I went to pull them out, uh, they stripped out because they were all too tight. Now I'm working on uh, getting those out. So I'm gonna use my screw extractor here and hopefully get those out and replace them with some new ones. You gotta be kidding me. So one of the problems is these screws, they're a low profile head and they're not super easy to come by apparently. So I had to get regular head ones and I'm going to use my belt grinder, grind a bit of it off. And the reason that you need to have that head is there's not enough clearance between that hole and that bracket for it to pass by. Well, it, there is, but it just scrapes just a tiny bit. So I need to take like a millimeter off, a half a millimeter, and then that will give me enough clearance. These have the slight advantage of also being stainless steel, so they're harder than the ones that are in there, so they should be easy, less easy to strip out. Also, these stainless steel ones, not only are they harder, they're the same size as these ones. So instead of having two freaking wrenches on here, you only need one. That's something that Onefinity should probably consider to prevent incompetent people like me from wrecking their machines. Right. So now I've got it off. I'm gonna put my shim stock on the back of this and then put it back on and hopefully it'll all be trimmed in. So after some screwing around, I now have this on this about 12 inch lever here to two thousands below there. So then we'll flip this around and this is dead flat solid surface here. So it's a pretty good reference. And I'm using it to kind of bridge all the little variations in the table from the last flattening pass because it wasn't trammed in, right? And you can see exactly the same spot. So that, given that it's within a couple thousands over that distance, I believe is square enough for me. So before, you can see all of these visible scratches and there, you catch them with your fingers. 
Now we're gonna run a flattening pass and we'll see how it does. Remember this isn't a how-to, this is more of a follow me around in this shop and uh, see how I mess up. That way you can all mock me in the comments. So a few projects have been run on this table since I flattened it, as you can see. However, if you look close, ignoring these ones, you can visually see some of those little ridges left, but you can't feel them anywhere. So that's flat. Just want to say thanks for watching. And if you're still here, why don't you subscribe? Because I'm in desperate need of the social validation of the subscriber number. After all, that's why we're on YouTube, right?